Hey y'all, this is Joe out of St. Bernard Acres. It's uh, Sunday, April 26th. Came out here to uh, do some final measurements. We're going to have that uh, cabin delivered. Uh, and then within the next month, I wanted to finalize everything where I wanted to put it. Because I considered leaving this as is, putting the cabin on here, stretching it out 16 feet in that direction, but we don't want it setting that far up into our front yard, basically. So what we're going to wind up doing is putting it in this location. All these floor joists are coming off of here. Uh, next weekend, my son will be back home and my other one will be off work. So we're going to come out here, dismantle all this hard work, and uh, stack all this stuff up in the barn. And then after I get the building and everything delivered, when we get ready to do uh, our add-on to it, we'll have all this ready for it. Um, and I can add on to the back of it. We just didn't want to go any further forward with our building. So that's our plan now. I'm going to run. Uh, the building is built with two by six floor joists, 16 inches on center, that run this direction. And then it's got five four by four skids, they call them, that run the length of it uh, for support. And what I'm going to do is once I take all this out, I'm going to run six by sixes, treated six by sixes, uh, 16 feet across, and we'll do one every five foot. We'll anchor those down and slide the building right onto it, slide it across. That'll be a support. All this will be gone. Uh, even after all the work we did on it, it's going to go. Uh, and then next weekend, while we've got all this off of it, we're going to get down and put the lag bolts through everything, through all the posts, get all that buttoned up, uh, since we are finally going to get something on it. Um, I didn't need to worry about it with just the floor joist in. But now we're going to have the building on it. We'll finish out all the post and beam structure that's going to support it all. But... We measured it out, just didn't like it going in that direction. That leaves us room. It's going down that slope anyway. Uh, I'll probably drop it down a level, you know, eight inches, run my floor back 12 feet so I can get a slope to my roof uh, on the addition part because the uh, Gabriel roof on the shed, you know, I can't. I'd have to run it flat if I stayed the same height, so I'm going to lower it 8 inches. We'll have a step down to the other levels. And then when I do the covered porch on the back side, I'll put another level, drop it down 8 inches, so I can put a roof over the, that covered porch. Uh, and the porch will probably go out 8 feet. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is add 12 feet onto this. So our actual size is going to wind up being 24 by 32. And then I'll add another 8 feet of porch onto the back of it. But part of that porch, out of the 32 feet, I'm going to use, uh, you know, 6 feet of it for a bathroom. Another 6 foot for a uh, uh, utility room for washer and dryer and stuff. And then a small pantry. And then the rest of it will all be... Uh, screened in porch where we can throw the dogs and cats, and cats. <laughs> you're right so that's the plan moving forward now I will say this when you're uh, making your plans for your homestead when you're in that planning stage uh, I have learned that the most important thing that you put in those plans is flexibility. 
Uh, it has to be a very fluid thing. You can, you know, we've gone through probably three different, four different plans of how to do this. Um, and as we learn new things and new opportunities, you got to be in a position to where you can, you know, make that kind of, it has to be, it's a fluid thing. It's never going to stop changing. All the plans we have for out here, nothing is set in stone. Well, except my post for the post and beam here. But none of our plans are set in stone. And as we learn new things and experience things, it's going to change. Uh, and I think that's probably the most important part about planning your homestead. If you're going to buy some property and uh, set something like this up, it has to be very fluid. It has to be able to change unless you've got the money to pay some company to come out here and build you a house and do all this kind of stuff. By doing it yourself as you go along, you can make changes to plans and get ideas. doesn't cost anything extra to do it on your own. Uh, so that's what you can take from this video very fluid plans very flexible plans and don't think that you've made up your mind about something because it's going to change whatever you have sitting at your kitchen table and you've planned for your property by the time you get out there and do it it's going to change it's going to be something different uh, so all of this is going <laughs> Because that was part of plan B. Now we're going into plan C. Uh, hopefully that'll be our final plan. Putting the 6x6 runners across it. and Once that building gets set on here. Then there's no more changing that. Uh, we spent probably. Three months. Talking about positioning. Where we wanted to put the cabin. Did we want it here? Did we want it back there? More over here? I mean, it just, and we go back and forth, and every time you come out here, as the seasons change, you know, everything changes around it. Uh, so, we've had an entire year or two of seasonal changes to look at before we decided this is going to be the placement of our house. Period. <laughs> so now, once I put all these poles there, we're not moving it again. Uh, but we didn't nothing is rushed uh, you have to have patience you have to be willing to change willing to compromise you know did I want to go with the uh, shed thing no, I didn't want to it wasn't in my original plans but you know what now the way they make them and the convenience of it and it being done I'll go that route so change it always changes uh, I think next weekend, you know, this also lets us, now we can start putting our fence post in to get the fenced in yard for the dogs. Uh, and my wife wants to, along this side over here, let me show you. Uh, if this doesn't jerk around too much on the tripod, get off of there, spider. Got a spider on my camera. Uh, you can see our property line and how open it all is to uh, the guy next door to us. So my wife's got these, what are they? Green Emerald Arborvite Vite. Green Emerald Arborvite that we're going to buy a bunch of them and plant a whole row going all the way down through there. Let them grow be a little bit of a windbreak and privacy. a privacy type thing because they stay green year round don't they yeah. yeah so we'll start planting those they grow pretty quick I guess yeah. uh, we'll start planting those maybe we'll bring a few of them out next weekend with us uh, and get some started but my primary focus is going to be the tear down of this uh, foundation down to the post and beam and uh, getting my six by sixes on there and getting ready for uh, 
uh, our house to be delivered. <laughs> Sounds funny, you know, our wood house to be delivered because you would think they'd be delivering a trailer or something. But uh, I was just talking to my neighbor this morning. He was looking at one when he was down in South Carolina. And he said they're really strict in their building codes and all this kind of stuff. And he asked them about that. And they are built to those standards. All they got to have to do is deliver it, strap it down, they anchor it. And it's good for all the hurricanes and everything. So, as I said before, they're built like a house. I don't know why more people don't do it. I think it's going to become more and more popular. But, uh, that's the route we've decided to go. It's quicker for us. And we'll spend Memorial Day weekend out here in our new house. Celebrating my birthday. Panoramic view. Now you will notice on this video I did a, it's shooting in a different format. I think this is nostalgia. So hopefully it'll come across looking like a, the old TV show uh, as far as the format of the movie. I hope it does anyway. I'm trying it. Because I love this camera. I'm going to be doing different video formats. And starting to play with that and get more into it. Let me turn back around. I'll get a notice from YouTube now that your video appears shaky. Do you want us to <laughs> fix that for you? Uh, but that's pretty much it. I mean, there's not much to update, just filling you in on the plans on how we finally decided to do this building. Uh, next weekend, there's going to be a lot going on. Uh, and then I'm going to start at home next week. Maybe next week I can get started on some of it. We're building a chicken coop at home. And, uh, we want to get, you know, half a dozen chickens. I think we're allowed five or six chickens in the city. Uh, so we're going to build a little chicken coop at home and get some chicks, some laying hens, and uh, see what that's like. Uh, I think, I know we got some eggs Friday from J. Null Zero. I went down and visited John, and he gave me a dozen of his eggs. And I'm telling you, in my adult life, as far back as I can remember, I've never had, you know, like, you can't call them farm fresh eggs because you can buy those in the store. They're labeled farm fresh. These are like homegrown eggs. <laughs> uh, but my wife made them for breakfast yesterday morning. We used some of those eggs. They were unbelievable. I cannot get over the way they tasted and, and how different they were. And it's like I'm ready to run back there, you know, run back down there now and just buy a bunch of them. Uh, so thank you very much, John, for those eggs. They were awesome. Uh, I'll be bringing you some more stuff so I can trade you for some more eggs, I guarantee you. That shit was good. And uh, we'll get ready for have our own chickens to lay those kind of eggs. And my wife brought up a good point about the noise. We start giving the neighbors a round of some of those eggs, and if they taste that good, they might not be complaining too much if the chickens are a little too noisy. We're not going to have any roosters or anything. Uh, just our limited chickens, and, you know, give us a few eggs a day and pass them around. Everybody ought to be happy then. But we've never had chickens before, never had anything like that, so we're, we'll start our learning process while we're living there, and then when we move out here, we'll be more ready for it. Uh, but that's pretty much it. It's a beautiful day out here. Uh, I can't believe the cold we've had. I had a, our Xerox rep at work, our service guy came in last week and he brought me some seedlings he had started, some cherry tomatoes, uh, beefsteak tomatoes, what, broccoli, uh, what? Peppers. Peppers. 
A uh, couple other things. He's got more to bring me, and he's bringing me some zucchini. So we'll start, you know, our garden at home. Uh, get things going there as well. But we had frost last week. I mean, it's been cold. I can't believe how cold it got after we had that little taste of summer a week ago. And I guess most of the people around Wheeling, I mean, they don't plant uh, until, you know, the middle of May. That's when it's the safest to start planting and you don't have to worry about anything. So that's still going to be a couple weeks away before we start planting at home. But uh, that's it. Just checking in with you. We're all happy out here. It's nice and quiet. The neighbor's back. Remember I told you he sold his place and... The deal fell through, so they moved. He's back, and we like having him back. Uh, the guy's brilliant uh, when it comes to building and everything, just a jack of all trades. And he's really into this whole prepping thing, and he's trying to get, you know, the whole. He's less of an off grid homestead, more of a prepping kind of guy. So I'm trying to talk him into getting a channel. I'm going to try to show him uh, how to set up a YouTube channel if he would just record the way he does things because he does them all right <laughs> i mean he's been a builder his whole life so he knows how it works uh so he's going to be great to have next door as we go through this transition here uh we're really glad he you know he's like me he lives a couple hours away <coughs> but we'll be able to hang out here on the weekends his kids came over on their four-wheelers so Back to being happy St. Bernard Acres again. Uh, but I'm going to sign off now. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. Appreciate it. And uh, I've got 500 subscribers. I think I was at 498 subscribers. So over the next couple of days, I'll figure out I'm going to have a 500 subscriber giveaway on this channel. I don't know what yet. So I'll figure out what, or you can comment and tell me what you want. Uh, I'm going to do one just because that's fun to do. Uh, but I finally hit 500 subscribers. I mean, I started this channel in January. So that's pretty impressive to me. I didn't expect it that fast. But uh, I'm going to have a giveaway, so don't worry about that one. Uh, if you got ideas for that part too, let me know. But this is Joe out at St. Bernard Acres. I'm out. <laughs>